we recording now? Yeah, we are. We okay. In. They like it when you're up there, like looking at it. Should oh, should I start out? that way? Yeah, go just, fake it. Go fake it real quick, and we'll <laughs> edit it. Hey guys, let me check the camera real quick to make sure it's recording. Go yeah. make sure it's recording. You okay. should make it gayer as you keep. Oh yeah, he's checking it real yeah. quick. Yeah, like little like twerk. <laughs> <laughs> and really, when you come back, really bend oh, like really show your ass. But yeah, do a soy nice. face. That's good. <laughs> the dogs are horrified. How they, does the light look? Look good? Yeah, it's good. Nice. It's all worth it. Ooh, what's up, YouTube? <laughs> Make sure to comment down below what you think the age of consent should be in the state of California. <laughs> Remember to like, subscribe. What's up, YouTube? We're going to do fentanyl until we die. <laughs> <laughs> what's up, YouTube? I'm going to shoot up YouTube headquarters. <laughs> Yo, we got the boy Skeeter in the studio today. He's going to eat his own shit until he passes out. <laughs> Don't forget, this is, yeah, that's going to be like Mr. Beast Remember the, in two years. Remember the woman that shot up YouTube, but she she didn't hit anybody? Yeah. She, she killed, she... <laughs> hey, <laughs> stop Gracie with the bone because yeah, it's Gracie, slouch. knock it off. We love Come you, on. Gracie, though. It's okay, Gracie. Yeah, she just fucking pulled a MacGruber <laughs> shooting with her eyes closed. It kind of showed, like, even, women can't even, they're not even as good as, <laughs> at shootings as us. And she, I mean, she couldn't even drive to the damn headquarters. <laughs> Do you think when she walked in, though, she went like, what's up, YouTube? And then, <laughs> ooh, what's up, YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> the first, ooh, what's up, YouTube? Sorry, I haven't been posting in a while. I got hit by a bunch of cars yesterday. <laughs> it was like Meet Joe Black where I just kept getting hit by cars. Yeah, it was a pinball thing. Yeah. <laughs> what's up, YouTube? I'm the highway. <laughs> You uh, said, uh, what's up, YouTube? I am vengeance. I have come for blood. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. This time we're doing the shoot up your school challenge. <laughs> <laughs> you sent a Joey's World Tour video to the group at like 9 a.m. today. Yeah. yeah, well, someone in the Lemon Party Discord, which you get access to if you're at, at patreon.com slash lemon party. By the way, I just realized I left the air thing on, so you might hear... You want should me to we, hear? I'll just pull. The well, plug no, no. De Devin likes the the heater, but I think I should go turn off the. Should we restart? Yeah. Purify real quick. Get up one last time. <laughs> it's people are going to be complaining. You yeah. Can, in the background, it sounds like this. Yeah, that sucks. That's a lot. People might pull over to yeah. unsubscribe. People are like, I can barely hear the slurs. <laughs> Unsubbed. <laughs> I need uh, that pure uncut slur. Someone sent me in the Patreon uh, Discord for Lemon Party uh, some good. Uh, Joey's World Tour edits, mm. so, some good like mashups of just the. Well, you want to call it the best of Joey's World Tour. You would call it the worst of. I right. was just. The, he should be mashed up with like the killing fields in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. Like it should be the most brutal footage of mankind's <laughs> it should, history. It should be that famous picture of all the all the Cambodians <laughs> running. Yeah, <laughs> it's him going, "What's up, YouTube?" And then that that picture of that Vietnamese guy with a gun being held to his head. <laughs> It's the Kent State picture where they're all on the floor, like crying. Yeah. It's him, Joey in the back eating a Taco Bell meal. Him beer bonging chili, and then fucking <laughs> that monk setting himself on fire <laughs> to protest the war. I'm big. <laughs> Ed Bud Dwyer <laughs> blowing his brains out. <laughs> ben, have we we've gone into Joey's World Tour here, haven't we? Oh yeah, we've done a we've done a deep dive. We we go into Joey's World Tour the way Oliver Stone goes into the JFK assassination. <laughs> I find people on the internet where I figure out, I go, here's where they live, here's what their parents do, here's the small town they live in, here's what they're, and they, and they have 60 followers, but I'm just fascinated. I have some people that I won't share with people that I've been fascinated with for close to, I would say two years now, and they literally have maybe 40 or 50 followers. It's a yeah. very unhealthy yeah, thing. Yeah. You'd be like, you'll be like, did you see the new video Daryl posted? I'm like, no. He's like, well, he died. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, ate his own hands off and he died. <laughs> that is always rough when a when a YouTuber at, like people are in like R.I.P. in the comments. Yeah, I had a video like a day ago mm -hmm. when like Bagel Boss went into the intensive care. Did Bagel Boss die? He went into intensive care. Yeah, I just remember there was a. It was trending on Twitter. Was like he had a stroke. Yeah, yeah. It was like R.I.P. Bagel Boss, and then you saw him in the tiniest hospital bed in the world. He did like an open mic dressed up as the Joker, and he died. 
Yeah. Really? Yeah. That was like his last big thing is he was the Joker doing stand up comedy, I think. And he essentially just he had a stroke and died. Yeah. His, his manager let the world know that Bagel Boss was a. Uh, uh, Gone on to another another realm. He's like the last like real celebrity we had. Bagel Boss. Mm-hmm. He set the world on fire with that with that <laughs> anger that he had. Was well, the bagel place right? Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. was he upset about? Uh, Somebody God. called him like short guy, I think, or uh, something. And he went on a real like uh, short cell, incel tirade. Right, right. Napoleon complex thing. Yeah. Then they just put him. Oh, sorry. He had a stroke, and they just put him in a little fucking matchbook. Like he was a Stuart Little. <laughs> they put him in an iron lung, but it was just a balloon that they blew up. <laughs> mm. you I watch, love that guy. Do you watch this guy's uh, those car reviews? Ben Scotty Kilmer. Mm-mm. Ever? No. Who's that? He's. It's just he does just regular like car reviews, but but uh, I watch his channel recently because I'm trying to like look into like maybe getting a, a car at some point because my car's dying. And uh, like slowly, he he'll, it's all cars, and then randomly, sometimes it'll just be like, "I'm getting a divorce," <laughs> <laughs> or like, like you know, the results came back. It's not looking good for me. Yeah, he's like, but anyway, on to the Honda CRV. <laughs> if you get the two, she's gone, she's gone, and I got cancer. But the the CRV will never let you down. Mm-hmm. Unlike my bitch or wife. You see those every now and then with every vlog or review guy mm-hmm. where you see if this is the videos I click on is when it just has a quick life update yeah. and it's just them and the, the thumbnails them in their car like this mm-hmm. with a big dr- hole drilled in their skull. Mm-hmm. They're doing Jim Halpert face, but they've had so, uh, so many processed foods mm-hmm. that their bones are barely still there. <laughs> barely. It's barely hanging on. Yeah, yeah. Their skull is an orb at yeah. this point from the, the amount of corn they've eaten. Dude, the roof of their mouth goes to the tip of their skull. <laughs> yeah, they their, lick their, their mouth looks like one of those redwoods that they used to drive through in the 40s. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love the life update. There was one video that was great of a guy reviewing a small batch whiskey. I was, I was literally about to say this, yeah. Do you remember this video? He ha- On his channel, he has like 900 small batch whiskey reviews. Mm. He's an alcoholic who yeah, fancies yeah. himself a you know content creator. Okay, right. But he's an alcoholic. Yeah, he'll just log in and be like, we're trying to go on the... <laughs> he just fucking smashed yeah. out of his... Just a 60-year-old guy with a goatee. Mm-hmm. And then it was one video where he wasn't even posting a life update. He was no, just, he's like, just like he's like, don't mind the uh, my wife in the background. She's she's uh, she's leaving me. Yeah. <laughs> really, he said she, that she was really packing up, put, putting stuff in her suitcase, and like taking. She took out like a like an, a coffee table at some point. She was literally grabbing shit and like moving, like disassembling furniture. And he's like, never mind the noise. My wife is uh, packing up. She's leaving me today. Mm-hmm. He goes, and he just kept he kept reviewing like Mad Dog 2020 or yeah. whatever it was. She goes over to his laptop, deletes his channel. <laughs> She's like, I pay for YouTube premium, you're fucking loser. Yeah, she won my YouTube channel in the divorce, but I get to keep all the empty whiskey bottles I use as decorations. <laughs> I love alcoholics. Mm. <laughs> They're so funny. Yeah, they truly are great. They get like a good 50, 60 year run. A lot of the time. It's the saddest addiction, for sure. Yeah. It's ways... Because heroin's, like, sexy, and, like, you're skinny, and, you you know, heroin chic and all that. And yeah. It's real romantic. Like, Philip Seymour Hoffman. It's, like, it's kind of a cool thing that you're addicted to heroin. Sex addicts are... It's positive to me, because they're always encouraging people in the comments. Yeah, with they're, sex addiction? Yeah, well, people that are, like, they, they're watching pornography for 17 hours a day... They're very lovely people in the comment section. They're never like, they're never like, oh, look at this fucking ugly bitch. They're always like, they're like, if I could like just I'm- be in the room for us, if I could just know yeah. what it smells like. They're yeah. very genuine people. Very hopeful. Yeah. They're not like fucking podcast fans. They're like, the lighting sucks. Can't even see your clit. Yeah. They just, they, they are just typing like great boobs, 10 out of 10. <laughs> They go. They type. Madam had a fantastic time spanking it <laughs> to this video. <laughs> My name's Jim. I live in Cincinnati, mm-hmm. and they're very generous with their money. They love. They're like, oh, I, I tipped you a hundred dollars just yeah. because, just because you you 
you just looked me in the eye. Mm-hmm. You just looked in the eye of the camera, and I got I got to give it up for you right there. Yep. Most of the webcam girls won't even look into the camera. No. They're so disgusted by the idea of me. There's guys out there that have spent their whole life building a business, and they're like an entrepreneur now, and they, they make six figures a year, and they'll mm-hmm. be in the comments on Pornhub like offering 50% of their company. <laughs> To like Asa Akira. Right. Asa, I sell speedboats in Tampa. I'd love for you to come down. I'm worth one point seven million, which is a decent amount mm. in Tampa. Mm. I can make a good wife for us. I uh, I do know a guy, a, a friend of ours, I won't say, who got addicted to cam girls for a while. He's a friend of ours. He's a he's the a mafia. <laughs> you come to me on the day. You come to me, you ask for a loan from OnlyFans. <laughs> you come to me on the day Asa Akira offers a special DM on OnlyFans for ball stepping videos. Jesus fucking Christ, Christopher. <laughs> You're buying fucking pussies molded out of the actual porn star's twat? Are you fucking kidding me? It's to sp- get a guma like everybody else. <laughs> Um, but he he got uh, he he was with a cam girl and he was like sending her just like hundreds and hundreds of dollars and then one day they got while he's like paying her money to do the cam girl dance or whatever mm-hmm. they got into like an argument about like the war in Ukraine for like fifteen minutes oh my god and then he realized like he realized like fifteen minutes into the argument he's like oh she's just like gotten eighty five dollars out of me yeah just mm-hmm. for me to argue like I'm on a date or yeah, something. yeah she's just checking the clock. <laughs> You're like it's like going to a hooker and putting two hundred on the table, then like arguing about like you know you just reprimanding foreign them. affairs, right? Yeah, I just miss my wife. Can you tell me I don't do enough around the house? <laughs> Can you make me wash the bed sheet? <laughs> I've I've never. Uh, I think even if I was single, I'd still never pay anybody on OnlyFans. It's yeah. just all free. It's like why would I? Mm-hmm. I don't. They're never gonna come to you and be with you. The person on well, OnlyFans. So, know? you know, I learned about this recently. Did you know about the the guys uh, that sign up for the texts from the ladies on OnlyFans? Where what you, is can, that? You, you can text them and shit and feel like you're like actually talking to them. Yeah. They hire people. Uh, they have like big uh, uh, numbers of employees that they train to. The whores do. The yeah. whores do. Right. Yeah. Pay people. Sex workers. Sex me. workers, Chase. Yeah. Not the whores. Don't say whores. It's very nice ladies on OnlyFans, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. sure they're all very nice. Yeah, they're nice people. They're nice people. Mm-hmm. So, but they hire people to text. They hire people for them? to pretend to be them, them to yeah. sext with right. fans. Or I don't know if they're allowed to sex, but they text. But realistically, regardless. it's just Philip Seymour Hoffman in a mattress shop in Salt Lake City. <laughs> Yeah, it's like punch drunk like love. love. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or it's 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 fifteen Malaysian children, like in a shoebox somewhere. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's you're you're texting a twelve year old who's going like, "Oh, I love your boobs. I love your vagine." Yeah. <laughs> they gotta stop. Yeah, the dogs are they, going. They, this is really <laughs> annoying. <laughs> I hate them. They've been. They were calm right before we started recording. They also like. I, I hate when dogs play, but you, you, there's never actually any blood. <laughs> Like they're biting each other's necks and stuff, mm-hmm. but there's not. We should be throwing like dollar bills on the floor. You kind, you almost want to like break a pool's cue and like throw it at them, and be like, "Let's settle this." Mm. All right, guys. All right, enough. Yeah, you really, you really actually have to stop because it's really. Distracting. Please stop. You're rapidly turning this into a Patreon. <laughs> We thought it was going to be a regular. It's looking like a Patreon now. Yeah, we're about five minutes away from dropping hard slurs because we know this isn't a public episode. Stop it, retards! <laughs> also, the way they'll People... they'll just gaily like like oh bounce at each God. other jesus christ you know what's funny is people go why can't you i don't understand why can't you put them in the other room while you record it's like they're gonna do this at the door they break yeah. down the door <laughs> like jack nicholson in the shining <laughs> they literally break it down okay they, oh I, my I god enough <laughs> this show is sponsored by better help guys better help what do you think about it I love it. I think it's tremendous. It's personally. helped me be better. <laughs> That's right. Because uh, you know, uh, life doesn't come with a user manual. No, nah, I wish it did. It'd be a lot easier. Wouldn't it? Like taking tear my Toyota Corolla, you know? Well, you know what's the next best thing? What's that? Online therapy. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yeah, it is. Think about it. What are you doing right now? 
listening to this podcast or watching this podcast, if you do watch this podcast, you're online. You're on the internet. Yeah. In another tab right now, you could be t- talking to your therapist while listening to this in one AirPod. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That's what we call multitasking. Mm-hmm. It's called getting shit done. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, so, you know, navigating any of life's challenges can make you feel unsure, whether it's a career change, mm-hmm. uh, a new relationship. Which I've done both recently. Or becoming a parent. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine called you. I'm talking to you, the listener. BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient and accessible ever. It's uh, ever, anywhere. It's 100% online. Uh, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online, plus it's affordable. And that's It's the world's largest therapy uh, service. Mm-hmm. Uh, just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash lemon. That's betterhelp.com slash lemon we all like therapy in this room yeah i just actually signed up for therapy i start next week so that's great yeah Yeah. uh and you can save uh you you could have saved 10 percent off if you used our promo i hope you use the promo code of course i use the promo that's better com slash lemon thank you for sponsoring the show better help thank you bye bye all right folks (laughs) Sorry, they were going nuts. I just had to cut out the last three minutes of the episode because they were going so insane. Yeah, we had to put Emma down. We had to yeah. put her. We had to put her down. Now Gracie's eating herself out. <laughs> you know, well, she I, heard the OnlyFans talk. Yeah, she got she got it mm. in a little bit. She, yeah, Gracie starts eating herself out. We just hear that Bing, Bing, Bing. <laughs> we're suddenly live. <laughs> Indian guys are typing "fuck the dog in the ass." <laughs> Come on, bro, fuck her, please. I'll give you fifty bucks. Do you remember when uh, the uh, what was it the in twenty twenty the the riots and everything with BLM was happening and mm-hmm. and uh, uh, there were all those like really ugly like white women that were saying like Hey, I'll post a picture of my tits if you donate to BLM, mm-hmm. but they all looked like fucking they all looked like Randy Quaid. <laughs> yeah, they all looked like Pizza the Hut. <laughs> I will embarrassingly say I never paid for porn. For some reason, I just was going mentally insane. I I spent like three hundred dollars on tits just because for- it was like fun. Like, hey, I donated to BLM. Let me see them. I think that was the it. It was literally like my excuse to just buy pornography. Wait, did you buy nudes for Black Lives Matter? Yeah, I donated. Yeah. I kept donating to Black Lives Matter, which I hated. <laughs> which pissed me off so much the horny racist. Yeah, but I w- it was funny because you would just you would buy mm. like forty. You would do- not buy. You would donate forty dollars to like. No, you own it now. <laughs> <laughs> you own the rights to them. I think BLM is like stock, like it's like Nasdaq. Um, no, you would donate it so you know some woman in Georgia can go buy her fifth house, you know. Yeah. And then you would text the person like, "Hey, here I bought it," and then they would just reply with a horrific picture of your tits, mm-hmm. and then you would just give it the thumbs up emoji, and then the whole interaction would be done. And that was it. You were like, "Thanks for the tit pic, <laughs> Steve Buscemi." <laughs> Thanks for feeding my horrific addiction issues, <laughs> but having an excuse where I can pretend I'm not a bad person. Exploiting <laughs> racism to pretend you're hot. Yeah. You're like, L- look at that. Look at that. Do you think they took a picture of their son's nipple and sent it? <laughs> Do you think that's a grown woman's They're nipple? committing acts of pedophilia <laughs> to make it seem like their body is better. Uh, right. For BLM. I for go, BLM. I go, ma'am, I don't want to offend. I think these are two flank steaks. <laughs> That you send me pictures of. She's like, yeah, yeah, George Floyd, whatever. Who gives a shit? Whatever. Look at my gross pussy. <laughs> yeah, can you just imagine me on Twitter? Like, all right, I'll find, I'll send nut videos mm. to anybody who donates to BLM. You have to understand, yeah. we're horny, but it's it's for George Floyd. Yeah. It's women. That's like, why we're masturbating. My pussy hasn't been touched in eight years and forty four days. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to see cobwebs on a pair of tits? <laughs> And I was like, yes, I do. Mm. It was also very funny. It was just like women in comedy who who I knew who were doing it. 
So it was kind of funny them admitting like, well, this is the only thing I have of value yeah. in a situation like this. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, does that pussy have like termites? <laughs> <laughs> the foundation's falling apart. Yeah, I need a home inspector to look at this pussy. <laughs> There's a bunch of sawdust <laughs> under their thighs. Yeah, like a Hank Hill guy wearing an Orkin shirt being like, well, you got a bunch of damage. I don't know if you might just want to tear it down and start again. <laughs> like a guy with a hard hat? Yeah, hard hat, <laughs> and, and he's, he's underneath her pussy <laughs> on one of those things mechanics used to roll back and forth. He goes, I, he goes, this is all fucked up. <laughs> he's got oil on his hands he's wiping off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's your problem right there. <laughs> Just measuring the the flaps. Do you remember we were we were uh, this was like a couple years ago. We were looking at a, a house somewhere, mm. and a guy. This was like there was like a problem with the sewage line, and the guy came out to us, and he was like just fucking looked like um, Dale from King of the Hill, just bald fat guy. Mm-hmm. And he goes, uh, yeah, you know, so you got a problem with the line? I want to come over here and show you some. And then he like opened the tank. And just like this horrific smell just like hit all like we were like almost crying. Yeah, I remember that. And he goes, if you take a look and you see and he stuck his whole head inside of the fucking <laughs> yeah. shit tank. He's like, and really get a nice like <laughs> just like really whack. Yeah, he's like, he's You need like, my clipboard? <laughs> Come on, get in there, son. Like scooping like a wine thing, like he's in sideways. Mm-hmm. What was it? What was this? It was just a terrible smell in the house and he was just like trying to sell it. It was just bait. like a pipe was like backed up or whatever. Yeah. It was a pretty fun it's time. A, it's guys that clearly have shed fetishes. <laughs> right. And that's why they're in that line of work. And they're Because they're excited to show other... It's sort of like a flasher. Mm-hmm. The way... Because uh, a flasher wants that moment where the woman goes... <gasps> yeah. Like that. That's what... That guy doesn't have to bring you out to prove there's shit in your septic tank. Yeah, yeah. You've been shitting in the home for 20 years. Right. All of your feces is, is in there. Yeah. You're very well aware there's shit. There's no reason to be like, uh, you might want to wake up your kids too. You might, uh, uh, If we could just get everybody out of the house yeah, and, yeah. and come down in this pit here. Yeah, yeah. He, he brings it up to you. He goes, see, there, this is what a piece of shit looks like. It's long, cylindrical. It, and you see, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of acidic. That's all the cum. <laughs> People have been coming in the toilets too. I don't know if it's after they shit, but there's cum in there, there's piss, there's shit. There's all sorts of things in there. Does every house have a septic tank that's like that is loaded up with our shit and then it like is released after years? I think if I you're thought it in, all the, goes... in the country. Yeah, if you're in the country, you have a septic mm-hmm. tank. And then when who when I've never every and then it. every a yeah, tr- every, a once big a year, 18-wheeler comes out. An 18-wheeler comes out and there's a guy who just eats all of it <laughs> once a year. <laughs> Joey's World Tour yeah, comes by. Joey's World Tour. They do a shit mukbang. And oh, is that the it. thing when they put the pipe into the street? Mm-hmm. I don't think they do it every year, though. Someone co- like every thirty years, I think your septic tank needs like replaced or something. Mm-hmm. And then uh, like a truck comes and then sucks all the shit out into a truck, mm-hmm. and then they just go dump it in the closest lake. Yeah, there are times when a septic tank will break and they have to like dig it up and just take it and yeah, like throw it in like Ukraine or whatever. Yeah, yeah, just a part of the country. They just put it in Flint. That's where right, all the broken right. septic tanks go, and the cum too, and the toilet, all the all that shit. Everything's the in there. All your cums in there. Blood, all of your period blood, piss, shit, man, teeth, uh, pennies, <laughs> goldfish, pennies. You, you've been flushing pennies. Have you ever just have you ever been pissing? You just drop a penny in there and you just flush it. Never once in my life. You never dropped change in the. <laughs> never once. Hmm. Not once ever. Hmm. Would you, I dump my, uh, I dump my uh, razor, my my. I open, you wash I open razor? my Norelco and I. I bat it in there and it, I flush the I'll flush all oh, my beard hair, hair and shit. Yeah, because I don't want to put it down the sink. I'll flush anything, honestly. Oh, I, f- I flush stuff all the time. Yeah, I shouldn't be flushing. I'll like flush wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tax forms. Yeah. <laughs> Just flushing a two by four down the toilet. Yeah, delinquency payments. You get any new letter from the government, you start acting like Karen and Goodfellas. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I fucking hate mail. I yeah. hate when the mailman comes. Mail is an attack. It's just a bunch of fucking threats and, and, <laughs> and, and, and like just orders. Yeah. The guy who hates the mail. I hate the mailman <laughs> with his stupid safari hat. <laughs> they all dress like they're bringing you a koala. <laughs> with their stupid little like push cart on wheels that yeah. they have. Their little Uber Eats robot mm-hmm. that they bring mail in. They're all slightly like they're all overweight. Like, well, <laughs> I know you. <laughs> Yeah, I guess, but they're all kind of off too. Oh, yeah. oh like okay. our mailman, he's very sweet, but mm-hmm. like every time he delivers mail, like Ida will be like, "Thank you," and he says, "He goes, he goes, thank you, you're welcome." 
like every time, oh, okay. like the same exact way. And I'm yeah, like, oh, yeah. we got a little Rain Man bringing yeah. us mail. <laughs> You're like, well, we have teeth marks on all our envelopes. <laughs> It just slobber on like, my... There's stomach acid on my <laughs> IRS form. You, you have noticed there's a lot of big fat mailmen, though, right? Of course. I feel like they're all shaped like fire hydrants. Yeah, you they know? are. Yeah, they're shaped like tombstones just waddling down the street. <laughs> they are. They're shaped like their trucks. <laughs> it's strange. That's why they have no door, because they, <laughs> <laughs> they had to figure out a way for them to get out quick. Yeah, they were blowing out their, their fucking rotator cuffs, opening doors. <laughs> they needed Tommy John surgery. It is also like like I live in an apartment and like if you don't check your mail little box enough they'll like get mad at you. But like it's I've only it's just trash. It's trash and every once yep. in a while like a form from the government that says I owe them like three thousand mm-hmm. dollars or something. I, I don't I'm not going to bed, bath and beyond. <laughs> like leave me yeah, alone. Knock it off. <laughs> they always send these giant like coupons. Yeah. Light like it's like a it's like a, a check a golfer gets. <laughs> So I could buy some linens. Yeah, they. It's, it's like just a, a, Chip Kelly's like playbook. They just jam it into your fucking mail slot. <laughs> this is one of the stranger starts to an episode. <laughs> We're like <laughs> we've never had <laughs> junk mail, folks. And What's the guy yeah. saying? Mean, <laughs> this is our real comedians in cars getting coffee episode. <laughs> and what's the deal with mailmen? Why are there male women? <laughs> they what? should be in the kitchen cooking mail. Oh, sweetheart, puppy. Yeah, I really blame the dogs, honestly. The yeah, dogs I fucked everything the dog up. Now they're back. But I think we're going to get the episode back. I think we're going to whip ourselves into a frenzy here. We will. We'll get whipped into shape soon. Mm-hmm. I, uh, By the way, I was just at dinner, and I don't know if you guys have ran into something like this, but the there was basically a table of six drunk women in their, in their menopause range, essentially. Uh-huh. You know the range. Like 50 yeah. to 60. And their hair's a little nuts. Sure. There's a lot of margaritas on the table that they've they've had plenty at this point. W- women where you can tell mortality is really getting to them. Really getting yeah. to yeah. them. Yeah. The yeah. sands of time have not been kind. Mm-hmm. And there's one guy there who vaguely looks like Michael Keaton <laughs> with a sports blazer. Yes, that's like every every catatonic guy with all the all the winos yep. that he's that he's with. His wife, <laughs> mm-hmm. wino one, two, and three. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Yep, by the Keaton. All they're all divorced. Mm-hmm. They they all swing and shit. They're vaguely and they're, fit. They're vaguely fit, but they still look like they're expanding mm-hmm. a yeah. little bit. Like yeah, they, they're taking steroids. Yeah, they have like abs somehow, but it's like still round. They so they still, just kind of look like a ninja turtle or something. Yeah, they have that alcoholic gut where it's like swelling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and their skin is overly saturated. <laughs> yeah. Turn, yeah. turn it down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you but, can tell they have all big pointy nipples like they're in an episode of Real Sex in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, dude, you know what's weird about their red skin, too, is you can tell they don't get any sun. Yeah. <laughs> but somehow all of their skin, they, they're all sunburned. They've yeah. never been outside. They could, they, could be, <laughs> they could be trapped in a mine shaft and walk out and they look like heat miser. <laughs> They were going... Uh, They're just red from like constantly taking Viagra. Like All the blood vessels yeah, in their yes. face are just exploding. It's hypertension, yeah. Yeah. essentially. They have Cialis face. <laughs> uh, they they started talking... This makes me like not want to have kids because they're all talking about their kids that are in the... From context and from what a couple of them said with naming and age, I got specifically, they're talking about their kids... Age ranges of 15 to 16, 14, 15, 16. And they're talking about how they want to be the cool parents and let their kids do cocaine. (laughs) What? I swear to God. You were overhearing this. I was overhearing this where they go, you know, I don't want to be the lame parent who's like, no, you can't do cocaine. They're like, you know, I've done cocaine. I can't lie to them and be like, I've never done cocaine. And all their friends at school, this is what I hear anecdotally about all of the school districts in LA, and I'm not trying to be that guy. Yeah. But I keep hearing that like weed is like the first, you get into weed at 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah, the yeah. LA school districts. And 13, 14, 15, if you're a cool kid, you start getting into harder stuff. And anecdotally, that's what this table was saying too, is they go, yeah, we don't want you to buy us weed. Of course we do. They act like weed is cigarettes, essentially. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they want to be doing coke like the cool kids like the cool kids in their grade. So their predicament is they want to be the cool parent. Mm-hmm. This is what they were all, this was their entire sentiment. 
all four of these horrors in this Michael Keaton guy. Yeah. Where they don't want to be the lame parent and not no. let their kids do coke and go buy coke, but they they say they're going to buy coke for their kids so they don't buy bad shit and overdose because of the fentanyl problem. Right, like they know. They're di- they I bet you they die four times a night. <laughs> And come back. They want their kids to die. That's what they're secretly yeah, yeah. They're I mean, posing it as like we just want to be the cool parents, you know, the, the type of parents that don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> we want to get rid of our children. You know, cool parents. Cool parents. <laughs> Imagine how cool we'd be if our kid died and that everybody gives us attention and money. Oh, I think that's it now. It's like oh, Jared's parents are so cool. They let him die. <laughs> They let him do fentanyl and They're die. They're so sick. Right. Dude, dude, Jared's parents are so sick. They let him wrap his car around a telephone pole and his head fucking exploded off the dashboard. They're so fucking sick, dude. I bet they have big nipples and fuck each other. <laughs> it's also a very L.A. parent thing, I think, as mm. well. well. It's like, I still want to be popular. Yeah, it's like, I still, I still base my entire identity on whether or not people like me or not. <laughs> yeah. But that's because I'm progressive. <laughs> Yep. I'm progressive that I think the only thing that matters is people thinking you're cool even mm-hmm. though I'm 15 years from dying of a heart attack mm-hmm. in a sex dungeon. Yeah. yeah. It, it makes you yeah, go... They, oh, sorry. What were you saying? Though? No, I, I, I got nothing. I, I was just saying like... <laughs> yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> you're waving a white flag. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> you're like, I'm already overdoing this. I was about I'm to... I'm over s- it. Uh... It makes me go, I, I I guess you're supposed to raise your children now on a farm. You're supposed to, like, move to a farm once they turn 12. Yeah. Because here it looks like they immediately, it's like a 50% chance they overdose. Immediately. They either overdose or they live long enough to become Kaczynski. <laughs> That, it's either like That's your, your options are, like, yeah, you, like, raise bad baby mm-hmm. or you raise Kaczynski <laughs> in the woods. Now kids find out other students overdose in the school, and they go, "Thank God! I thought he was, I think he was going to shoot it up next week." <laughs> Thank God for China. Yeah, the, yeah. The China's the government's been releasing fentanyls into the school to stop school shootings. <laughs> <laughs> Just a small trace amount of fentanyl in the water yeah. in schools. There probably is some guy at the CIA being like, "If we get them addicted to heroin, they won't have the energy <laughs> to buy bullets." <laughs> I bet you you're right. It's an anesthetic, essentially. Yeah, yeah. It's like when you have like a bad dog or something. You're like, we'll just give him like morphine or something until he dies. Mm-hmm. Just in the uh, the the school, the cafeteria lunches, they're just putting fentanyl and everything. Yeah, they're they're all sluggish and slow, and they're like, bruh, <laughs> bruh, yeah, bruh, bruh. 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 The, lu- the lunch lady's like, you see that euphoria last night? <laughs> Put dump in the mac. Right. Right. She's she's dumping pills onto a big tray. <laughs> bruh, bruh. bruh. The lunch lady's like just yeah, just scooping Yeezys out of a trough and dumping them on a plate. Yeah, every, every, the LA school district is just run by Eminem's mom. <laughs> <laughs> just sprinkling drugs on all the food. And then all the teachers can just molest the kids in every class because they're all like, like bruh, bruh, and you can just walk around and get your pick of the litter because yeah. nobody knows what's going and on. And then anybody. the teacher doesn't get charged with anything because she's like, it was flaccid, like they're all high. <laughs> Yeah, Your Honor, they didn't get hard. They didn't even get hard, Your how Honor. Can I, how can I fuck him with a soft dick? Yeah, the judge is like, what a fag. <laughs> Innocent. <laughs> Innocent. Gay. Gay, gay, gay. Gay, gay, court. gay. gay. <laughs> hype, hype beast judge. <laughs> yeah, the court found this guy gay here. Yeah. <laughs> gay lift. <laughs> gay lift. The judge is just like looking at the kid, like, mm. "Let me see your fizz face." <laughs> judge Booty, yeah. You got anything today, Ben? Yeah, you got I do. any weird fucked up? You got like stuff? Saddam Hussein's files, or uh, the the thing I have for today is I went to see the whale for the second time. That's really, and you Ubered to like, I Ubered to the Grove to see the whale. And have diarrhea for most of the movie because you because <laughs> you had the slushy and the popcorn. Well, I don't now. I don't know. I'm seeing the whale so many times. I don't know if I have Munchausens. <laughs> oh, you're just, just gonna become a great big fat guy. Yeah, from just watching from yeah. The whale. just from watching a movie. <laughs> just I just walk out of the theater one day. I'm 700 pounds. This is like your version of watching Drive in 2009. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's your version of the scorpion jacket. Is diarrhea <laughs> and being like it me. <laughs> 
It's so me, though. Yeah, it is crazy that your version of self care is watching the fattest gay mm. guy in the world die slowly. That would be funny if the Zoomers <laughs> became really obsessed with the whale. But they're like, he's so cool. <laughs> He's so he's so fucking badass. Yeah, dude. Did you see the fucking skin that fell off his back when he got up? <laughs> did you see how when he got out of the couch, his skin peeled like an old pizza? The new big Gen Z trend. They all want to become 600 pounds. They're all going to buffets just trying to get fat as all fucking shit mm -hmm. to be like the movie. Yeah, it's on the news. Like, your kids are unfuckable. <laughs> They're calling it becoming unfuckable. <laughs> And your kids might be doing it behind your back. <laughs> Are your kids trying to not be drafted? <laughs> Does your kid wear one of those athletic knee sleeves even though he doesn't work out? No, they start cosplaying at first where they're like, is your, is your son shopping for wheelchairs on the internet? <laughs> well, it's because of a growing new trend called becoming unfuckable. <laughs> and all the teens are doing it. <laughs> Your son may be trying to get a pussy on his back. <laughs> <laughs> there is like such a fight. Now we can talk about it, I guess, because you've seen it fucking 15 times. Yeah, and I'm not going to ruin it for you, Devin. But I I'm don't gonna, care. I'll see I, there's it, a couple of things I want to talk about. Please talk, talk away. Yeah. It's, talk a, away. it's an amazing movie. All right, I'm going to watch it. I would have asked you to come with to see it with me today, but I know you have to nah, wait. No, it's just I got to wait. Yeah. I just got a thing for fatties. <laughs> mm-hmm. She wants to see it with me. Okay. I did text you that Ben is probably watching that movie like he's in Cape Fear. <laughs> yeah, just, just <laughs> maniacally so, laughing in the yeah. front of the theater. <laughs> Old Beverly Hills Jews crying, and Ben's like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Nudging the guy next to me. <laughs> you start stalking a fat family. <laughs> I have four ices. Yeah, really? You get four. I did when I watched the movie. I did definitely look around for a big fat guy just to see if he had the balls to go watch the he movie. He had to go see it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't see any big. Uh, the first time I went to see it, weirdly, I'm thinking about. I'm walking through the mall and I'm thinking about the Jay Leno uh, Instagram reel I put up. And I was thinking about one fucking negative, horrible comment about yeah. it. I was like, fuck that guy. Yeah. Because I'm just, I'm just crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, fuck that guy. Um, and then I started thinking about Jay Leno. Literally within 10 seconds of thinking this, I look up and Jay Leno is walking toward me. What? I swear to God. And his face is super fucked up. He has like, he looks like balls palsy kind of. Jesus. Which is weird because in the TMZ video, he looked fine. But in person, he just, now it looks like his face melted. What, yeah. did he light himself on fire? Yeah, he actually did. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, wait, where's that been? <laughs> what did he light himself on fire? It's a comedy show. Comedy show. Yeah, he's walking around in the Phantom of the Opera mask, mm -hmm. just with a big chin built into it. Yeah. He no, he looked uh he looked bad. <laughs> and he looked he, And he's already out. He, you know what kind of look he had? He had the look where his mouth is agape, like really loose mandible, mm. and he's kind of looking like this and walking hunched over. It's the look of like the old man who doesn't know where he is. Right, yeah. So I hope it didn't affect his brain too. He the looked, fire melted his brain. He looked like he was trying to go like, what? No, just Jay, just, just, just think. Think, damn it. What year is it? You got this. You got oh, this, pal. Man. Start with the year, then the month. Fuck the day. Who cares? You know it's nighttime. It's dark out. You got that, buddy. Then we'll work on country, then state, then city. You yeah. got this. You'll figure it out. Context he's, clues. He's just walking around trying to shake people's hands like it's the beginning of The Tonight Show. <laughs> yeah, he's got Alzheimer's and he can only like talk in jokes about Judge Ito from 1996. <laughs> yeah, he's at the mall and he goes, all right, give it up for the dancing Judge Ito with everybody. He's like, Mr. Leno, we have to take you to prison. This, this the Narita Bobbitt thing's nuts, huh? <laughs> Uh, Mr. Leno, you have night Alzheimer's. <laughs> you have night. He's like a werewolf. Yeah, we have to strap you into this car so you can go to sleep. <laughs> we have to strap you into an old jalopy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can't stop shitting on Jay Leno <laughs> and his horrible It's a very accident. unfortunate thing. It's such a horrible thing that happened to him. It was, it's so funny just to be a beloved comedian for like 45 years, getting a huge controversy, kind of like bring your image back and then burn your whole face off. Yeah. 
Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, he deserves it. Especially if your face was that big. But anyway, we do talk, we talked about that before. He but. does. He does seem like the type of guy to have the mental fortitude where he's like, you know, that just happens. You know, that's showbiz. You know, sometimes you burn your whole face up. Yeah, so, he know? was. He was like a rough set. <laughs> that was a rough set. Dude, no, I'm, I'm still. I'm not spending my Tonight Show money. <laughs> the tough crowd. I'm still at the Comedy Magic Club. Everybody's throwing up now, but I'm still performing. I'm still going up. <laughs> I wonder if he's generous. He seems like the type of guy that has all that money and he's still like, he goes to like McDonald's like Warren Buffett and he, he pays mm. with the exact change. Gets a senior coffee for yeah. 35 cents yeah. at McDonald's. He kind of seems like that type. He, he does seem like he gets a soda with a quarter with a string tied to it mm. and then pulls <laughs> he it pulls out. He pulls it back. He's, he, oh my God. All right. <laughs> oh all right, my guys, God. Kill her. <laughs> Just kill her finally. <laughs> Bite her neck and kill her. Yeah, for the next episode, we'll fi- we'll figure out. We'll p- we put gotta them at get, the neighbor's house gotta, across the street. We gotta get rid of them. <laughs> We're gonna have to get rid of them. Yeah. I know, Emma. I would Thank love you. if mid episode Emma just bit Gracie's neck and then crunched, <laughs> <laughs> and she just fell. <laughs> and we're like, finally, some peace. Oh, but so then, right after that, if that's not crazy enough, I walk in to see the whale, and who's walking in with me? But one, Tyler the Crater. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. And he's, he's dressed like a choir boy. It's very strange. Yeah, yeah. He's always dressed like he's about to explore the Arctic or something. Yeah, it yeah. kind of was, it was dressed just... like Steve Zissou. <laughs> he had like a weird tie where it's like it, the tie's tucked into the thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like a French thing mm-hmm. or whatever. I see Tyler the Creator all over LA. You see him everywhere? I see him like three times a year at least. <laughs> all the time. He's like in an old BMW at a stoplight yeah. or out front on Fairfax somewhere. Yeah, you see Tyler so much that you you just wave. Hey, Tyler. Hey, what's up, Tyler? He's like, yonkers. He's like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gay now, maybe. Probably not. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? I'm always out with hot women, but I'm gay. Joey and I met him out front of the comedy store once, and Joey was like, what's up, man, Joey? <laughs> <laughs> to shake his hand, and Tyler put out his pinky. Like this? And he was like this, and Joey's like, okay, all right? <laughs> and Joey just did it, like, word. <laughs> <laughs> Word. An amazing moment, to Mr. Witness. Creator. Word, Mr. Yeah. Creator. Mr. Creator, nice to meet you. I'm gonna go piss on the comedy store sign real quick. <laughs> Mr. The Creator. I got I got hammered with Joey last week, and he came back to my place, and I put on. Oh, it was after we we played pool together. Mm-hmm. And he came back to my place, and I put on Gone Girl, and he was like, his eyes were closed, like the whole movie, but he was still somehow watching it because, like, every forty <laughs> minutes out of nowhere, he would just be like. Affleck, you filthy pig. <laughs> Joey does get so gets so drunk he sees like a snake. He just sees like body heat. Eyes closed. You're a scumbag. You're a scumbag, Affleck. He calls me every time he gets drunk. He calls me. He leaves me like three bomb threats. <laughs> or he'll pretend to be the FBI. He'll be like, he'd be like Devin. He'll call me by my first name. Like the FBI mm. would ever do that. First off, but he'll go like Devin. This is the FBI. We uh, found a bunch of child porn on your computer. So, uh, yeah, you're going to be going away for a while. You're a sick bastard, Costa. <laughs> you're a sicko. You're a sicko. Well, I was with you guys earlier that night, and I kept I kept laughing because we were at a bar that was like on a slope. Yeah. Like maybe like a 30 degree slope. And I just kept going like, Joey's in a damn battle with the slope right now. <laughs> Because he was so drunk, you would see him have to, like, muster. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If the foundation of a home is, like, barely off, he just starts falling <laughs> that direction. He's like a marble when he's drunk. Yeah. Wait, for, for like, I like architects. <laughs> he's a marble. They put Joey in the middle of a home to see if it's level after they've built it. He starts stumbling toward the southeast corner. Yeah. Well, he would start walking down the slope, and he looked like just Michael Jackson leaning on stage. Mm. And then he walks up and then he's walking just backwards the entire time, doing the thing, the drunk guy thing where you take, you go to take a step and your foot goes backwards. Yeah. Mm. Slides of forwards. all the way back. Joey did that classic thing too where I was like, hey, Joey. And he's like, he goes, what's up, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> and he turns and there's a beer that just shatters into the side of a wall. Yeah. And he goes, what the hell? <laughs> He goes, it's, it's just these glasses, they're like round on the bottom or something. Like It's like, I mean, I'm it's just, like embarrassing. I'm just so happy he's not doing bomb threats anymore. <laughs> sure, it was a rough sure. six six month period. Mm. Yeah. We had I, to have an intervention for Joey doing bomb threats. I, he, he, sp- he, sp- he spent the night at my house one night, and this, this was after a pretty depressing thing happened in our lives, but it was still pretty rough. Mm. I came out in the middle of the night, 
because Ida runs in the room and is like, Devin, Joey's calling in bomb threats. And it was like 4 a.m. <laughs> and I go to the living room and Joey's on the phone hammered with, he's on the phone with Chase Bank. And this lady's like, okay, so you would like to close this account? And Joey goes, would hate to be in Times Square today. <laughs> Just saying some bad things can happen in a major metropolitan area. He would go like, he, he, he would be on hold with people and he'd be like, tick, tick, <laughs> boom. <laughs> so he'd be like, he, so he would, he says vague stuff where he's like, man, the Denver airport's mighty pretty. <laughs> yep. It'd be a shame if anything went to happen to it, huh, Buster? Exactly. Very vague, but like, well, it could mean a lot. <laughs> <laughs> could, it could mean a lot. You know, I live pretty close to a local high school. Come to think about it. Tick, tick, tick. Tick, tick. One of Joey's you remember when that guy blew up the AT&T store in Nashville? <laughs> Sounds like sometimes people reach a limit. <laughs> <laughs> One of Joey's finest drunk moments was he was in an Uber, Ubering over to me, and he was already hammered. And this was after these giant wildfires broke out mm -hmm. in L.A., and uh, this really scared Uber drivers just driving him. And Joey's just like filming and like saying crazy things. Mm -hmm. and he, he started he started saying that he's the he's the guy that started the fire in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> and he was convincing the driver. The fire, yeah. He was like burning up millions of acres. It was of, yeah. Of he land, got, he yeah. goes he goes he goes. I started it. I started it. And then he goes he goes brother that feeling when that first ember hits. <laughs> driver was like really afraid and thought he was thought he was actually admitting to mm -hmm. doing it it's amazing he still has an uber account I after all these have years. no clue i used to treat uber like his personal like nanny <laughs> like he was just blackout drunk and i would just throw him in ubers mm -hmm. and be like just get out go and god knows what happened on those drives yeah. we treated his ubers like it was like mr wolf and pulp fiction <laughs> they were the fixer <laughs> yeah we need a, we need a fixer let's call a, a, a afghani man at 3 a.m one time he showed. One time an Uber rolled up to our house at like midnight, and Joey just got out and like walked into our living room mm -hmm. and lay down on the couch. And we like all turned. We were watching a movie. We we're like, "Oh, hey, Joey!" And he's like, "Ah, ah." And then I called you, and you go, "Oh, he said he was calling an Uber to go home." Yeah, but he, he called an Uber to go to the, from Santa Monica all the way across LA. He was so drunk he Ubered from his place to your place, thinking he was going to his place. And then fully walked in, and then walked, walked in, in, and he for not. It took him. It took you guys being like Joey. Yeah. What are you doing for him to be like? This isn't my house. <laughs> yeah, he's like, bitch, Jace. What are you doing in my house? My beautiful one bedroom in Santa Monica. <laughs> it was like he's like when he's really drunk. He's like Rooster Cogburn. Yeah. It's like True Grit, where he's sleeping like all. No, it's up. unbelievable. Yeah. He's like he pulls like corn dodgers out of his pants. <laughs> he just starts eating like old jerky. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if Joey, like, threw a bottle up in the air and then pulled a gun out and shot it. <laughs> Just at a bar in, in East Hollywood. I'm going to put them in the other room. The reason that Lemon Party was on my mind before we, when we were thinking of names... Right, because you came up with the name, yeah. For like a four or five month period, Joey and I were just in a very dark place, and we were just very careless, and we would go to bars, and we'd develop relationships with all the people that work there, mm -hmm. and then sometimes we'd go and we were like extra drunk and maybe not the greatest customers... And you know everyone has those iPads now that you could you know so yeah you, you flip them around they flip them around the tip. yeah so we we developed a relationship with like a few bartenders around his neighborhood and we'd go and Joey would walk next to me and be like we're gonna do a lemon party <laughs> and I'd be like all right all right because I was yeah, hammered too like it's Ocean's Eleven mm -hmm. yeah. And then he'd be like, can I change the music? And they'd be like, okay, because they like knew us. And then Joey would go to LemonParty.org on the iPad, like in, in front of the full bar, in front of the boss, like everybody. And then he'd flip it over and he'd be like, Cisco, have you been watching this? <laughs> to like an innocent bartender. Luckily, Joey's so charming, he gets out of everything, and they all loved it, mm -hmm. but it was, like, amazing. It was We were just lemon partying bars all over town. Yeah, Joey's, like, the most charming man who ever lived. He's great. Yeah. 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 He, once, he once kicked me in the back while I was ordering tacos. I remember that. And I'm, like, with a steel toe boot, 
And I go, Joey, you tricks. But meanwhile, my back's like welting up. Like one of my vertebrae is shifted. <laughs> He's very strong. And I'm like, oh, you're, you're a little, tr- you're a Loki. One time he lifted Ben over his head Iconic in my living photo. room. Iconic photo. Mm-hmm. You could post it later if you mm-hmm. want. And Ben looked over at me like, please have him stop. <laughs> Ben begged me to get him to stop. Yeah. Well, the photo's great because it's Joey screaming while he's holding Ben. <laughs> oh, like he, a, it's like a WWE photo. Well, that's what we were all worried because he picked you up and then you were right in front of the coffee table and I was horrified he was just going to slam Slam, you. yeah. He did it to my mom, too. There's a whole... It's a it's a live photo where it's moving mm. when you hold it down and you see my mom's legs like flipping back and forth <laughs> like she's about he just, to be... He just raises your, your poor mother into the ceiling fan. Yeah. <laughs> Capitates my mom. Yeah, and he go, and then the next morning he sends me an inconvenience fee. Mm-hmm. That was Joey's classic thing, where if he was too drunk, he'd do the next morning he'd be like, "Let me send you an inconvenience fee," and he'd he'd like Venmo you like fifty bucks for his behavior. It's yeah. Like a, ta- a Joey tax. <laughs> he's just paying people off for dealing with. Yeah, him. he is like a mob boss. He's like, "Don't say I never did nothing for you." <laughs> Give you an envelope with fifty bucks in mm-hmm. it. This is for the other night when we came in and did the thing. I like, go oh, when you pulled your cock out and started pissing everywhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, but Tyler the Creator was in the movie. Oh yeah, <laughs> you said for, for the well. <laughs> you said he's with some babes though, right? No, some younger th- uh, these things. Sure. <laughs> that had hats with weed leaves on them and cat ears and stuff. Oh, like like what? like weed store employees. Yes, Damon. Yeah. I don't yes. know how else to describe them. Yes. But yeah. Women who get so into hypebeast culture, they become like swamp things almost. Mm-hmm. They have like mold on them. Yeah, and they yeah. smoke so much weed, they have like no muscles. They're like, they're made like <laughs> string cheese. They're just very like. Yeah, they look just... like that dare commercial from the 2000s <laughs> where the woman <laughs> just melts, in the couch. melts into the couch. Yeah. yeah. It's like a weird, it's like they came out of that thing in the fly. Mm-hmm. But like in one portal was deviant art, yeah, and in the other one was hypebeast culture, and that's the thing that came. They out. they were a hot woman who walked into a Spencer's gift so that got struck by lightning, and then they <laughs> yeah. like bonded with the Spencer's gifts. <laughs> Just people where I don't even know, I have no idea what you are. Right, you you have very short hair, but I it doesn't seem that you're gay. You seem to you seem to be straight edge, yet there's pictures of drugs all over your body mm-hmm. it's, it's i have no idea where they're coming the from. fishnets have grown into your legs at this point you can't remove them <laughs> yeah, the, you know, the fishnets are your varicose veins yeah you think she's six feet tall but when she takes her doc martens off she's five one she's like oh these doc martens no this is what my feet look like <laughs> oh yes my feet they're uh my the soles of my feet are 12 inches long <laughs> So he's with uh, a couple girls like that and clearly a bodyguard type guy who's like standing seven feet away or whatever. And he's very mature now. He's carrying himself like yeah, an intellectual yeah. kind of. Which yeah. I didn't. I thought he was still he the started skateboarding winning Grammys doofus. And, 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 and making more like, you know, um, artistic, artistically inspired music. And, you know, I he, loved he, Bastard. He's, I, a, he's yeah. an amazing musician. He, yeah. he, he, he tries to do new things all the time. And mm-hmm. I respect I respect the shit out of Tyler Creator. Well, he's very he's grown up. I'll he's grown that. up. Yeah. He's grown up. He's we been... watched him grow up in front of our own eyes, mm. yeah. if you will. I did stand up at one of his uh, shows one time, and he was in the front row. He called me the N word. Recorded, <laughs> right? Yeah, it was a highlight of my life. What, how do you call you the N word? I did a joke about black women, and then him and all of Odd Future were like, You are N word. Like, nice. They kept saying it, and I was like on stage, like, Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you? You told me. Oh, no. <laughs> you're blushing. Oh, my. You're blushing. No. You're like olive oil. <laughs> I was like, and I'm not that. <laughs> You're like, you're the N word. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. The Creator. Mr. Creator, stop. It was like Marilyn Monroe, that picture with her dress flying. I was like, hey, get out of here. Hot garbage air going in your pussy. (laughs) But he was very wild then, like backstage. Mm. God, this is. (laughs) God, (laughs) blow their heads off. (laughs) Dude, you gotta, yeah, you gotta kill the dogs, dude. (laughs) You got to just like get a syringe full of air or something. Yeah, this is just wild. We've never had this this big of an issue with no, them no. before. This is insane. They're like really, and the thing is, they wait until we literally hit record. Yes, to start going. They were wild. sitting. They were sitting the whole time before. Oh my god! Enough of you, <laughs> Emma. Please stop, Emma. We're gonna have to record like two hours. Emma, to get please one stop. <laughs> Do you know what Ben's rent is? <laughs> uh, we're moving out soon, but yeah. um. 
It is funny. The only reason you have this incredibly expensive place is because of these fucking two retards. Oh, these two retard dogs? Yeah. Yeah. Like, literally, if these guys got hit by a milk truck, you could be living in a nice apartment. They require a lot. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Tyler uh, was backstage, and he was he, he was obviously doing things to make us uncomfortable. Like, all the comics were standing around waiting, and they're mm-hmm. like, what is this? Like, what is the Tyler Creator mm. show? Like, whatever. And he wa- kept walking by the green room on the phone with, like, one of the Odd Future guys, and he kept being like, Lionel, what'd you say? Like, m- m- wanting us to hear, and then he'd be like, he fucked you in the butt? Is that he fucked you in the butt? Lion, really? He fucked you in the butt? And we were all just like, ah, classic Tyler the Creator. It was very interesting. Yeah. Well, he's not that now. No, now he's now he's very much like, uh, I, I I know how to tie a tie. <laughs> um, my dad taught me how to do it. Uh, I tie my ties with donuts on them. Thank you. He's like, uh, I sailed here. Like, excuse me, I dressed like P. Diddy's assistant in 2004. Thank you very much. Uh, I dress like a French maid now. <laughs> I know I used to make songs about raping uh, mm. my mom. Now I'm a French maid. Yeah, yeah. it used to be like the Virgin Mary. I fucked her in her ass. It's just like Eminem inspired. Yeah, yeah. It's just you know, shot he was rap. eating cockroaches. Now he's like, I'm a I'm a gay guy in a Wes Anderson movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It used to be he was this weird school shootery creature guy who mm-hmm. ate bugs. Yeah, yeah. Now, his first album, Goblin, Goblin, he has like his eyes blacked out and like an upside down mm. cross on his face. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was just like it was supposed to be you know very intriguing and every track was a, a different slur. Mm-hmm. He's great. Tyler Crater's great. I yeah. love. I told you I love great bastard. Music. I love could Goblin. Go like, he could go like Earl Sweatshirt. And Earl Sweatshirt, I think, is just a homeless guy now. His album <laughs> gave me very, very, very crippling depression for maybe two months because I listened to that 30-minute I Hate Shit I Don't Go Outside. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I was on repeat That's for the one two that weeks straight. On, right? I love Dude, that album, it, yeah. it made me so depressed, though. It's very depressing. You yeah. can't listen to that over and over. It, no, no. no. I, yeah. I haven't like loved Earl Sweatshirt's reason stuff kind of sounds like it's broken yeah <laughs> no it is it's like a weird accordion <laughs> it's just, just like you guys there's something wrong with yeah. my headphones yeah it's like did, did this did something happen is the is right. it scratch is You're, this a scratch <laughs> file it does sound like mf doom like had a stroke or something <laughs> and he does those weird raps where he's like tragically agically yeah, yeah actually yeah. factually <laughs> yeah yeah it's like, yeah it's just a weird fucking they might be giants kind loop. of like mm. spiritual lyrical thing yeah, yeah. yeah and then you see the music video and you're like dude he looks like he's jamie fox and the pianist right now he has like trash on him a weird beard <laughs> he is weirdly like the guy where he's like you want to see my uh, my notebook <laughs> you're like no 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 keep yeah. that over there and his notebook is just drawings of his dad getting stabbed <laughs> over and over again <laughs> He had a legendary uh, quote, though, about Eminem. He said something like when Eminem started making like pretty bad music, mm-hmm. where he was like, only people that listen to Eminem, like, like they drink too much Mountain Dew and they join the army. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, and I've seen it stolen like a million times. Like everyone. Attributed to someone else? Yeah, everyone will say that about Eminem, but it's like Ty- uh, Earl, Earl had like the first tweet where he said that or something. Mm, yeah. yeah, it was great. No, and I like Earl, but it seems like he's genuinely going through like a lot. I think he's very depressed. Yeah. 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 Uh, Oh, so so in the whale, I was dude. I was hoping this, <laughs> the through line here. <laughs> I was really hoping that in the whale, though, since Tyler was sitting behind me with these, uh, you know, two deviant art drawings. Sure. I was hoping that I could hear maybe some. He's Tyler. He's a huge ego. He's clearly a narcissist. I think he's very talented. He's a big narcissist. Huge narcissist. You're saying like any stars, like a narcissist. anybody. Yeah. 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 But him especially, where he's very much like, look at me, look at me. That's a one of the big, that's one of his big personality traits is look at me. Sure. I think. Sorry. <laughs> but I'm Ben, wa- you've finally gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm waiting for, I thought he was going to be like, ha ha, look at this guy or whatever. But none of that. And it was a very like respectful, no one laughed, no one made any comments, there was no nothing. And then he was outside the movie after like sort of adjusting his tie and like talking with both of them at the AMC Century Mall and like, like what'd you think? Like just, <laughs> but like discussing the movie in yeah. a very polite. He's and, out front, just like looking at these two like like hip hop dancers, mm. and he's like, he's fat as shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, feeding them edibles like they're dogs, like it's kibble. But it seemed like they were weirdly keeping him in check. 
where he was like he was like almost I didn't hear what he was saying but the tones of what he was saying and how he was discussing the movie because he was discussing the film is he was very much like well you know they they uh, consulted the obesity coalition uh, for uh, before uh, you know uh, g- getting into character Brendan Fraser like stuff mm-hmm. like that stuff that you right. would say in a Vanity Fair sure sure type of uh, interesting interview so it was very like I was like oh he's a, he's an adult now which yeah. is cool adult artists should change and evolve they shouldn't be he can't obviously he can't be eating roaches and talking about like fucking God and his pussy nah, when he's 50 that's insane he's evolved in the last like the five, last five six years he's kind of been that he's won, won Grammys he started making like mm. real music like beautiful music yeah, well, that's he's wearing a- blonde wigs now that's you know? right yeah. yeah he's wearing dresses <laughs> He, uh, but that's the, that's that's like the problem with Eminem is they can't grow into the ne- some guys can't grow into the next thing and he grew into yeah, Eminem the next doesn't thing. know what to do. He was trying to just keep up with the like fuck you know the mm-hmm. new everybody and it's just really he just makes yeah. Call of Duty music now. <laughs> <laughs> he just making like, Venom, Venom, Venom. Well, He's just yeah. making like like the soundtrack for like terrible movies. <laughs> like the Call of Duty. Music. The Call of Duty music. Yeah. He makes like like if you're at Walmart, mm-hmm. he's blasting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. He makes music for PTSD. <laughs> he makes music that like trailers listen to. <laughs> yeah, because he like, is a trailer. Yeah, like person. trailers bob their head to it. <laughs> and he's my favorite person, Bob, I know. Or possibly yeah, ever. The, the, the problem I is can't. when he started getting criticized, he's like, "I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna rap faster." Mm-hmm. And people are like, nobody cares. Yeah, we don't. That's not even a thing. We don't care anymore. He's also just gets things wrong. He'll call like anything trap rap now, and it's like you're just. It's a little out of touch. Oh, he sounds yeah. like an old man. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. getting like beefs with Machine Gun Kelly, and mm-hmm. you're like, what happened to this just great man? Song. Why are you even in the same realm as him? Like, why are you even saying his name? Right. Why didn't you overdose in 2009? It's really Please. it's the Stanhope joke. Like, God, I wish you died. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I'm happy for your life. You need to raise your daughter. But right. Just but stop rapping. Please stop. Stop rapping and take the painter's hat off. Mm-hmm. Shave. Oh, God. <laughs> that stupid hat. Oh, the the uh, army cap? Or? Army cap. I don't even know. He uh, he makes music for, like, it's like not to be like Earl Sweatshirt, but he does make music. He makes music for people that join the army, like, in the mall. <laughs> Like, well, like they leave Wetzel's pretzels and then join the armed yeah, services. They, they had no plan to join the they army. They had that no t- plan. They're walking around like, I like camo. Camo's pretty cool. I go hunting. Yeah. I go hunting, I go hunting for humans. <laughs> so what if I join the army? It's like it's a big, it's like a giant, like, it's like a giant, like, Bass Pro Sports Shop. So you tell me it's like Big Buck Hunter, but with brown people. <laughs> but it's guys who were at the mall and they went to go get Dippin' Dots and then they opened their wallet and it was empty and they go, oh, I should go join the army. <laughs> if I join the army, I could make twenty, maybe $30,000 a year. A guy that wakes up and sees there's $3 in his account and he just he's like, well, I'm just going to go join the army, I guess. Yeah. I'm going to go get on a bus and go to the mall. Yeah. It's a guy who's like, well, I could get addicted to meth, or I could join the army. <laughs> he just goes to his, his, he tries to take a shower in the morning, just no water comes out. He's like, yeah, I guess I'll go to the mall and yeah. join the army. It's a guy he who just puts in his headphones, just listening to, uh, what is it, Reunion? What's the uh, uh, rehab? What is it called? Uh, relapse. Uh, relapse. Yeah, relapse. Uh, no, no, no. Relapse is good. Actually. What? No. Me. What's the album with the American flag? Revival. On it? That's revival. That's yeah. the worst. That's the worst album ever made by anybody. <laughs> <laughs> ever. No, I'm not kidding. Isn't it a waving Eminem American is flag? My favorite person ever. Mm. And he made the worst album ever made. Yeah. You would rather you'd rather listen to like the Corey Haim album where he's just like Michael Jackson. I'd rather listen to anything. I'd rather listen to like Indian hip hop or like just and it's the worst thing yeah. ever. You'd rather listen Tone to that deaf. to that Asian violin they play in the subway. <laughs> I'd rather listen the to bow. Yoko Ono scream. Like in a lobby. Oh God! Uh, and then he had the other one, was I'm not afraid. I believe in God. <laughs> Take a stand. I love Walmart. <laughs> Everybody, Walmart slashing prices. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. He's he's doing songs about he's doing songs about how if you grew up in a trailer and joined the army, one mm. day you can move into a double wide, mm. which is almost like a house. Yeah. Roll back prices. Van life. That cage of balls. <laughs> you want to buy a ball from the cage of balls? They still have that for yeah. kids. Yeah, right? they do. A yeah. bunch of little bicycles no one ever buys. <laughs> you do see those bikes, you're like, what child can fit on this? A Rodney Carrington <laughs> comedy DVD. 
a fishing pole for four dollars. Yeah. <laughs> it will break. Yeah, the fattest jeans you've ever seen. <laughs> they cost four five cents. <laughs> Edible jeans. <laughs> They're made yeah. of jerky. Have yeah. you have you tried to pick out clothes from Walmart before you take something off of a coat hanger and it immediately disintegrates? <laughs> yeah, I bought. If they get wet, they disappear. Yeah. You like take something off right. of a rack and it just turns into a bunch of moths. Yeah, yeah. and they just go yeah, everywhere. Locusts. Like, like, no. Yeah, you try uh, it on and it's cutting you. Mm-hmm. You're like bleeding. Yeah. No, I, I ripped like six months ago. I ripped my pants at work, so I had to go just to Walmart and buy a new pair of jeans. And I got them off the rack. They were like the smallest size too. There, like which is not normal for me. Mm. And then you take it to the lady who's guarding the changing rooms, and she almost gives you a look of like, "Why are you here? Mm. Just take the pants home. They just cost twelve dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna try them on. Yeah, I'm like, I want to see how they look. They're like, you're in a Walmart. <laughs> you you fucked up your life. She goes, I know you're driving a 2007 Toyota Corolla with a check engine light on mm. right now. The last guy that used the changing room tried to fuck a Mountain Dew. <laughs> Have you been in a Walmart bathroom before? It's just like a homeless guy on his back like this, and a turd is coming out of his ass like it's a baby he's giving birth to. <laughs> it's a guy doing Lamas breathing to shit. He's doing a water birth yeah. in the sink to take his shit. A homeless guy going, hoo, 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 ha, ha, ha. <laughs> he's holding someone's hand. <laughs> Yeah, they take the shit out of him and lay it on his chest so he can get skin to skin contact. A doctor comes in, tells him, tells him not to hold the, the turd by the back. You could kill it. We're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to do surgery. The the cords wrapped around the shit's uh, neck. Uh. Yeah, and then he just carries it around town for years, going, "My baby." Oh, putting my legs up like this. He's on his back and it's crowning. And someone's like, I can see it. I can see the head. Uh, <laughs> and he goes, It's a miracle, I tell you. It's a homeless guy. Yeah, it's a homeless guy paying with his own teeth at the checkout. Mm. He puts an Eminem CD down, they're like $5, and he just pulls a tooth out and puts it. Okay. That's collateral. <laughs> Here's my filler. <laughs> oh, oh, so the whale. Here's what was so confusing about the whale. Yeah. And really, it fucked me up because obviously, if you listen to the show, folks, you know I'm fascinated by guys that are a thousand pounds. And you are too. Mm. You either you either you're either completely totally disgusted by it. Katie couldn't look at the screen. She was horrified the entire time. Or you're fascinated by it. Mm-hmm. I fall in the category of admitting that I'm fascinated by it to to a fault for sure. sure. Mm-hmm. You're you're fascinated by somebody who's just completely fucked their life up in such a weird, interesting way. Yes. Yeah. It yes. also just like is the representation of the American decay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's 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 overconsumption to the point of death. Uh, yeah. 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 Mm. Where you're not even enjoying it. I mean, there were scenes in the movie where he's like literally eating fistfuls of Snickers bars at one time. So here's what's crazy is it's like one of the most amazing performances where he t- he has this line where he turns to his ex-wife and he wants to he wants the ex-wife to promise promise the daughter or pro- he wants to hit her to promise to him that when he dies, she she's going to take all of his money and give it to her basically to the daughter yeah. and he turns and he's like i have to know that i've done at least one thing right with my life <laughs> oh, wow and it's this um you're fucking crying mm-hmm. you're crying it's crazy the way he's delivering it and then two minutes later he's eating a three musketeers like it's a french fry mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he's just breaching in he has buckets of chicken yeah there's literally a scene that could have been in the nutty professor where he eats he eats a one pizza that's off screen you just see him throw the whole pizza he box starts, down well he starts stacking three or four slices on top of each other and he starts eating them like it's and a crazy he, two minute montage of him eating. and then he wheelchairs over to yeah it's really a montage 
It's a montage of him eating. Then he goes, he's in his, wheel, he got a fat guy wheelchair at this point in it because it never leaves his living room. Right. Mm-hmm. And he's just, he just wheelchairs over there and he rips a bag of barbecue chips open and starts putting them between slices of bread and he starts eating the barbecue chip sandwiches because he's out of the two boxes of pizza and he starts dumping grape jelly on it. So you go from like being incredibly torn for this guy to all of a sudden it's this crazy like thing. It's a, it's the scene from The Nutty Professor where they're at the That's buffet. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Darren Aronofsky is is like he's fucking with me. Mm-hmm. I think you know what I think he's doing? What? I think he's going, I dare you to fucking laugh at this shit. <laughs> I dare you to laugh. This guy's mm-hmm. a fucking thousand pounds and he's making barbecue chip sandwiches because he's so fat. <laughs> Which by the way, I don't think people do that when they're that overweight. I don't think they're like putting. I don't think they're like putting a Lay's bag of potato chips bag between two slices of bread yeah. and eating it. Well, I, th- I think people with the, eating disorders like that, they don't like. They're not eating like they're on heroin or something, and they're like jonesing. You know, like he's shaking and like <clears throat> shooting ranch well, into his mouth. That's what I think Aronofsky can't understand. Is he's like, well, it's like heroin. I got it. Right. He's like, he, he eats the furniture. <laughs> It's like, no, it doesn't get that bad. They just like they order like three boxes of pizza and they eat it in bed and pass out. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I've watched the the six hundred pound life before, mm-hmm. and it's always like it's very funny when they're <laughs> they go to the buy a pizza. It's amazing. They go to they'll buy and they'll buy ten pizzas, and he'll eat like three of them before he gets back to the yeah, to his family's house. I think I know specifically what episode you're talking about. The black guy. <laughs> the black, yeah, yeah. The yeah. black guy. I'm a connoisseur for my six hundred pound life, and he's so fat that he has sweatpants. And his fat has like bifurcated down his sweatpant line, and it's like two big nuts like yeah. walking around. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's pretty great. <laughs> yeah, because what the gut does when the gut gets big enough, it starts to in the middle. It's like it's kind of like a, when a like a dam breaks or something, mm-hmm. where the water comes out at one point. The dam like broke in his skin, where then it, your stomach grows another stomach, mm-hmm. and then it descends. It's yeah. almost like it's growing a really big, big penis. Yeah, and it comes out like this long. It's like a big. Yeah, it's like a big fucked up it nose. Starts, your body starts trying to create another man. <laughs> so your fat, your the, your belly yes. turns into two different legs. Your it starts budding. trying to hide you. Your forehead starts like drooping over mm-hmm. your face. Like it just tries. It tries to create mm-hmm. a new body yeah. in front of the, the worthless trying- one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's trying to escape your diseased brain. Yeah. <laughs> It's like budding when a thing buds and something grows yeah. off of it. Mm-hmm. I would like it if there was a guy who got so fat that like a handsome, beautiful man came out of him and he just died, <laughs> like a like a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. <laughs> just a guy steps out of the the fat guy, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah, they find they find the shell of him in his house somewhere, just like opened up, and there's like a Giga Chad guy standing <laughs> in front of him, just like with perfectly cut like dick ab mm-hmm. arrows. Yeah. So is this movie so gonna? Aronofsky's like, look, I don't know what to tell you guys. I, I consulted the. It's the obesity coalition. Uh, yeah, he's like, don't co- worry, coalition. I cons- I consulted Martin Warren, so we know what's up. <laughs> yeah, like he called. He like Facetimed with Lindy West mm-hmm. for thirty minutes, and he's basically Darren Aronofsky is like, look, I don't know what to tell you. In the movie, the guy's a thousand pounds. He's bedridden. He masturbates to gay pornography all the time, and uh, yeah, most of the movie is really just him eating and crying. So I, I dare you. Yeah, I, I dare you laugh. I, I dare you to not laugh at this. Well, that's the thing is that, like I told you, the very like you, I went into it expecting this emotional, empathetic movie, which it is because I cry at the end of the movie. Yeah, but you are you have a mental illness because that's the only time you'll cry is watching a really big fat guy die. <laughs> but you think it's an emotional, empathetic movie, and then you mm-hmm. go into it, and the first scene is him watching gay porn until he has a heart attack. And like starts going like, uh, uh, and he's lifting uh, up his fat. God. He's doing the thing where he has to lift up his fat to get his arm under his fat to yeah. jack off his penis. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be great if the movie ended with him dying by like a stray bullet on like the Fourth of July. <laughs> bullet comes right through his roof, kills him. Yeah, a guy from like two towns over. Yeah, and then the whole family's like, <laughs> I guess he won. Mm-hmm. He was gonna die <laughs> this way, I guess, the whole time. He never even died from his health. Oh, and the do- his daughter keeps coming in, and she keeps saying "faggot" and "retarded." Why? And Aronofsky's still like, "Hmm, when's it set? Nothing, nothing funny about that." Twenty six, four years ago, five oh. years ago. Yeah, he's like, "Hmm, yep, yep." She just walked in. She just used those slurs. She calls him that. She was talking about uh, Walt Whitman, and then she calls his apartment. She's like, "Your apartment smells, and it's retarded." Man, was she like? She's like listening to our podcast <laughs> in the movie. 
Well, there is a funny. He teaches remotely, so he's always wearing a headset. Mm-hmm. And the first time you put the headset on, I'm like, oh, he's a podcaster. <laughs> it makes it makes perfect, perfect sense. sense. <laughs> It's all. It's just an indictment of mm-hmm. the art of podcasting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, he has two dogs come in and just start fucking each other while we while he's trying to record. Besides it being about your favorite people, fat, worthless <laughs> idiots, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> is it a great movie actually, or are you overhyping it? Well, I think I may be conceited here. I think I may be conceited, okay. uh, but I think it's. I think it's really good. Jace, uh, Katie was completely horrified when he would eat. Katie would turn away like it was a beheading video. Yeah, and she would go let just tell me when he's done eating because it's that it's that nasty. Yeah, he does buckets of fried chicken, tons of pizza, just various different types. He just goes. At one point, it just turns into a cooking video mm-hmm. where he's just like making things in his kitchen. He's yeah. swallowing cans of beans. He's putting his own hand in a George Foreman grill and pressing <laughs> it down. Dude, at one point, he looks in it. He opens a drawer of fig newtons. And he goes, and he closes it, and then he opens the other drawer, and it's just filled with three musketeers and Snickers. Oh, man. And then he takes them out and eats them like they're French fries at McDonald's. Oh, I, I can relate to that feeling of looking at a granola bar and being like, God damn it. Like nature's ready, that shit, or what is it? The nature bars? Yeah, yeah nature's, nature's ready. Valley? Yeah, nature's va- hidden va- nature's valley? Yeah, nature's, nature's valley. valley. Wipe yeah. those off the face of the fucking planet. Yeah. I hate those There is things. something about eating those dry with nothing else where you're like, I might as well just blow my brains out. <laughs> so mm-hmm. depressing. They're the most depressing snack. Yeah, just debris everywhere when you're done. <laughs> it's horrific. I get yeah. it, because I'll have the same thing where I try to eat healthy. I'm not very good at it. But I'll eat oatmeal for four breakfasts in a row, and by the fifth time, I just kind of look at it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm ordering fucking McDonald's for three times, yeah. like today. Mm-hmm. You know how 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 is having scenes of him showering mm-hmm. and us seeing him naked to see how they have how do they do it? He has everything. He never can grab anything. He always takes out a. It takes him like a minute to assemble a claw, mm-hmm. like he's cleaning a pool. Mm-hmm. If he just wants to lift up a cup of water, he has to like screw. Yeah, like he's about it's to like play he's pool. pool or something. Yeah. Like he has to get a claw and then he'll grab it and then it. But it takes a minute. But they're trying to show this is what it's actually like to be right be, a bedridden guy. And uh, then they have him showering, and of course, in the shower he has crazy. It's like Pee Wee Herman's mm-hmm. like Rube Goldberg machine where he's pulling crazy levers and he has sponges and loofahs and just insane things. And I'm like, I don't think because this is supposed to be like us feeling feeling for them Mm -hmm. it's supposed to make us more empathetic but then he's showing like don't show me him wiping his ass yeah don't show me that Mm -hmm. that's aronofsky that's like requiem for a dream Mm -hmm. but with a fatso (laughs) you have to show that that's like the meat requiem for ice requiem for ice cream (laughs) (laughs) that's that's the meat is 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 aronofsky going we want to show the really fucked up stuff yeah yeah Yeah. we want to see him take his shit that's the whole point. Like nobody thinks of like what is it? How hard is it for like guys that fat to take? Yeah, no, it's it's just I'm, the thing. I totally agree. It's like us insight into like how sad this life's this guy's life is. But then you leave and I'm like, all right, I yeah, just kind of okay. like I'm really sad now. <laughs> right. <laughs> like what is the like? You could just make a movie showing me a prostitute getting fucked in the ass and then dying. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I yeah, that does happen. <laughs> It's I don't know. It feels like such a fourteen year old. Like, show me a footage of like a guy getting shot in the head, and you go, "Can you fucking deal with that?" Yeah. And I'm like, "No, I can't." That's why I don't want to watch that. Right. I, I watched an interview with Aronofsky where he's like, "All the other movies, like Shallow Hal and The Nutty Professor, all of them are really cartoonish." We wanted. I consulted uh, everybody in the Obesity Coalition, and we got a great 3D artist to render uh, what Brendan Fraser's body would look like if he was actually very, very disgusting. <laughs> Like, I wonder if there are deleted scenes in the movie mm-hmm. that Ar- that Aronofsky decided to cut out, where Aronofsky's like, now in this, like the director's commentary, where he's like, we we built something within the suit, so for when he's pissing into the toilet, it's spraying because it's hitting all of his fat. It, it was a ten thousand dollar device, but that's how they really piss. Yeah, because yeah. they're so fat and disgusting. They're like, we have a deleted scene where he eats uh, dinner with the clumps that we felt ultimately was distracting to the movie. <laughs> Like, I can't imagine someone who is actually his weight writing a letter to Darren Aronofsky and being like, thank you so much. <laughs> now everybody looks at me much differently. No. They're, I bet. People used to just try to, like, put me out of sight, out of mind. Now people are like, oh, my God, that's 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 Daryl's life? Yeah. 
That you can't be that bad, can it? Yeah. Oh, it's so brutal to even hear about. It's it. brutal. It's so brutal. Ida's gonna walk out. It's yeah. It's just no women can make it through that movie. Yeah. The only people I've seen in the theater other than Tyler the Creator uh, are it's it's lone. Like I went today by myself. It's single people. Mm-hmm. It's single. It's That's one. Hey, person. You gotta watch it like Bickle. You gotta be like a Travis Bickle. You have to be. Travis Bickle. You do have to like shoot at the screen with your finger while yeah. you watch it. You can't. You know. You don't go with a bunch of friends. Yeah, you go to Buffalo Wild Wings and then watch the whale. <laughs> yeah, like come on. You guys walking out laughing like mm. it's naked gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's amazing though. I might see it a third time. I'll, that's I'll, that's insane. That's that's. I don't know. I mean, maybe. I mean, I've seen a lot of movies three times, but no, they were never about a fat guy in one room. But. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the name of the movie. Fat guy, one room. <laughs> Fat guy, one room. <laughs> Fat guy, one room. I mean, I don't blame you though. I saw The Irishman like four times in theaters. Irishman was great. Yeah, yeah. but it's still deranged for me to have seen it that many times. Yeah, but it's because yeah. uh, two of the viewings were just re- with retards. <laughs> I hate retards in movies. Uh, retards ruined Once Upon a Time in Hollywood for me, where they kept cheering and laughing at the wrong parts. Uh-huh. And I hated it. Mm-hmm. I hated it. Nothing drives you crazier. Yeah. It, yeah. it makes me insane. Burb- I don't go to Burbank for that reason. I always get retards in Burbank. We, I saw it at the Landmark up the street, and the first time it was like unbelievable. It was just all like TikTok dipshits in the theater. Mm-hmm. People were like talking throughout it and like standing up and just dancing in the aisle and shit. I was about. I like was about. I started like yelling at people. <laughs> Did like, you really? Ida and my dad told me to like calm down. I was about out to be like this is his last movie with these people like, we'll never see these people on screen again yeah you just stand up you're like i have a gun <laughs> i'm gonna recreate the dark night rises yeah you are watching with people who are like brah scorsese the go yeah it, that's i know god i hate scorsese. everybody yeah scorsese. i I watched, I think he I told you. He did the you, Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> I love Scorsese. Scarface is sick. Dog, Carlito's Way is the greatest movie of all time. <laughs> Fuck yeah. By the way, Brian. Stella! <laughs> Stella! <laughs> Stella! Remember? Remember? From Coach Carter? <laughs> and Elaine. Remember Sidefed? <laughs> My Scorsese, dude. <laughs> yeah, they they love Martin Scorsese from his daughter's TikTok account. <laughs> I watch fucking Get Out in Los Feliz at that like r- the Los Feliz three three yeah where they like wheel out like a Panasonic like you're, like it's a, like a substitute teacher yeah, it's a and projector in high school mm-hmm. yeah they're drawing they're, it's a stencil of the movie it's, it's, it's like a Don Hertzfeld it is yeah it's it flashcards really fast <laughs> it's a guy who walks in front of the theater and holds his iPhone up. <laughs> The whole movie, but it's like a pa- it was packed, just full of white people mm-hmm. from like NYU, and I was next to a white woman who I swear to God was like wearing like a fucking cloth tied around her head, and she just the whole movie was like, uh uh-uh, uh, child, you do not go in there, and I'm like, you're the movie, you're doing the movie at the movie, what are you doing, mm-hmm, child, uh-uh. mm-hmm, child, you do not, and then like she gets outside, she's like, oh, black person. <laughs> She sees the poster and calls the cops. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a white woman. Doing it. Yeah, it was a white woman. No, it was a white woman doing it. Yeah, a white yeah. woman. Be like, you better get out, baby. <laughs> you know we ain't gonna catch no black people going in there. <laughs> this ain't that type of movie, baby. She's on Obama's website in the movie. <laughs> uh, a black person comes on screen and she hides her purse. <laughs> Throughout the movie, she keeps she keeps locking her car. Like sticking your hand out the yeah, exit hand window, out the exit, the exit, exit door, exit door, just yeah. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> yeah. The TSA guy comes on screen. She goes, "He raped me." <laughs> but I'll vote for him. But I'll, I'll vote, vote for, for him. I'll vote for his ass. I'd vote for Obama a third time. Uh, yeah. Good times. Uh, well, we've done like an hour. Well, I guess I'll have to cut out the dog stuff and and whatnot. But this was this was a good app. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is our best episode we've done. <laughs> this is the best. I really feel like I nailed the Brendan Fraser. Uh, you did that like line. an incredible performance. Mm. Yeah. That was that was better than any Brendan Fraser <laughs> movie. You should be. I would love if you could be in the whale too. God, I would love to. God, I would love it. I want yeah. a TV show of the whale. Of the whale. 
because it's amazing. We've only seen mukbangs and like horror, just people in their mm-hmm. car that yeah. are in a car. He actually like got the red cinema 4K cameras, like really put thought into it. It's just, it's just like. I really love him for doing this for me because yeah. I feel like nobody else is going to appreciate the movie but me. They yeah. should do a whale too where it's like Osmosis Jones and you play his gut biome and you're just like, God damn it! Stop! Stop! Snickers for <laughs> breakfast again! Yeah, Ben's just a rogue yeah. black cop yeah. inside his body. Yeah. For the love of God! Drink a kombucha! <laughs> You fat fuck! Your toes are dead. We gave up. <laughs> we closed that part of the body. Mm. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Patreon.com slash Lemon Party. Uh, Devin's new channel will be in the link so we can get subscribers back over to there. Yeah. We I bought lights at Guitar Center, but they're way too bright to shine directly on us. I got different lights coming from Amazon. It's going to be a whole different game next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, happy holidays to everybody out there. Uh, thanks for everything. And uh, we got to do another episode now. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye. Everybody. Bye.